Terrace Marshall was a second round pick out of LSU in 2021. And after a very disappointing rookie year, he had a promising second season. And I think a year three breakout for Terrace Marshall is the most realistic way Carolina's receivers can exceed expectations. Before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also follow us on all of our social medias. You can find the links to those in the description below. Terrace Marshall only had 490 yards and one touchdown last year, but he averaged 17.5 yards per reception. 23 of his 28 catches went for first downs, and he ranked third among NFL receivers in EPA per target. So not a ton of usage, but he was efficient with the opportunities he was given. At six foot two, Marshall ran a 4-4 flat with a 39 inch vertical jump. So he has elite athleticism and explosiveness to be a big play threat. Right here, he's got press coverage on the boundary. He's gonna space release with a couple short strides and then he accelerates outside, does a great job using the inside hand to break contact and blow by the corner. And the pass is underthrown, but he draws a DPI. And you see flashes of his potential as a jump ball winner. Right here, he does a good job getting over the top of Cam Taylor Britt for the touchdown. Another one here against Baltimore. The pass is underthrown, but he's able to work back to the ball and make a nice catch in traffic. So with Marshall's size, vertical athleticism, and some of the flashes that we've seen, he should be a premier contested target, but his contested catch rate last year was just 37%, and he needs to do a better job creating space for himself at the catch point. His size and strength should be a major weapon against smaller corners, but he lets people get into his frame and he doesn't consistently use that to his advantage. Right here, the corner's playing with outside leverage. Marshall tries to attack the leverage, but he can't get a clean release to the outside. So he has to use up too much of his space early in the route just to get around him, and he gets pressed to the sideline and taken out of the play. But this is a great job from week 17 of extending his arm just enough to stack the corner without drawing a penalty. It's underthrown, but this is still a good example of using your frame to maximize catch space. So as a deep threat, the two things that Terrace Marshall needs to improve are strength and body positioning at the catch point and diversifying his releases at the line of scrimmage so that he can start to get more initial separation and stack corners downfield more easily. But I think Terrace Marshall can be more than just a deep threat. He's a fluid route runner who can separate at all levels of the field. Nice job on this slant route of accelerating out of this jab step. The corner establishes contact out of his release, but then Marshall wipes with the outside arm to get him out of phase. So I think Marshall has the skills and traits to become a complete number one receiver that runs the entire route tree. We just haven't seen that much from him, but I think he should have a lot of opportunities this year. The Panthers don't have any established number one receivers, but they have a lot of guys that can play. So if Marshall struggles again with drops, which he has for most of his career, Carolina has receivers that can take his spot and get the job done. But outside of Mingo, there's nobody with Marshall's upside as a true number one option. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.